بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back dear viewers to another episode of Let's Talk on your favorite channel Huda TV I am your host Yusuf Kroma and today we'll be talking about the very very essential topic of the concept of family in the Islamic tradition we know that family plays a significant role that uh, families make up communities and ultimately the healthy community is healthy Islam is what brought Islam into fruition so what makes a healthy family how do we sustain this family how are we to develop our families so we can renew the, the sort of vigor that Islam had during the time of the Prophet Muhammad through individuals that made up families, great families and families that made up great communities. Inshallah Ta'ala, we're going to start by introducing our noble guests. Firstly, we have to my right, Brother Mahmoud Najib. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you. My name is Mahmoud Najib. I'm an English instructor, translator, and soft skills trainer. I've been teaching English for more than seven years. And it's my pleasure to be here, surrounded by a company of great people here, inspiring me. And I really thank you for your hospitality and this generous hosting for us. Thank you. The pleasure is always ours. Thank you. Uh, and to my left, we have a new guest. Alhamdulillah, it's my first time meeting a brother today. It's a pleasure. Uh, brother Patrick Mustafa, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. salam. Peace be upon you all. I'm uh, Patrick. I'm from Slovenia. And uh, uh, I actually came to the show before. This is the first time with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I always enjoy these uh, topics and uh, hope today you will have a good one, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, inshallah ta'ala we will. Uh, last but certainly not least, we have the veteran of the show who always comes prepared for the show, <laughs> inshallah, with, with great knowledge and great insight to share. Brother Idris Surah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, so let's get into the topic. We know that Islam came uh, to sort of enhance the family life, to develop it and sort of acculturate it and raise the family life to a standard that will allow Islam to progress. So the question is, before getting into the concept of what does the family in Islam look like, I want to talk about what the, Islam, the family look like in pre-Islamic Arabia. Uh, well, let's start with the pre-Islamic period uh, before Islam. Family was treated uh, in a way which you can say mistreatment and oppression was subject to this. And also the woman didn't have the right to talk, didn't have the right to inherit. And I can say uh, members of the family were humiliated and they had a bad uh, treatment before mm -hmm. Islam. And I can also say uh, that before Islam, uh, they didn't have this knowledge, they have this ignorance. Uh, Islam came as a light to demolish this, I uh, can say, the, uh, the darkness of uh, ignorance of pre-Islamic period. Islam gave the woman the rights to talk, give her the right to inherit, uh, and also uh, Islam was very essential for that period. Mm, MashaAllah. Uh, Brother Patrick? Yeah, I uh, completely agree, and I think that uh, before uh, Islam actually came, it was, uh, it was kind of a shame mm. to, like, women to have, like, if you get a daughter, they used to, uh, before they, uh, when they used to get a daughter, they used to be ashamed, so mm -hmm. they had a choice, like either be live with that shame, or they used to even small babies. They used to put them under the ground, mm -hmm. like bury them, so they do, they would not live with that shame. And and they, the women they they didn't have any rights. All the only the, the men. And even if if a woman, if a wife lost a husband, mm -hmm. then it was to to the son to decide whether she can get married again mm -hmm. or not. So uh, it was pretty much just just the men controlling the thing. So when Islam came, it, it kind of gave the rights and gave uh, the explanation of mm. how of the word family. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. Brother Idris? Yes. Um, I just want to add that, you know, it's pretty, you know, widespread and famous and well-known these days how bad the pre-Arab no, pre era was before mm -hmm. Islam. The, it was a disaster, basically. Basically, uh, um, uh, um, Every everyone was meant to serve the man in the household. Yeah. It's sort of like a monarchy, you know, like he whatever he said goes. B 
basically, to put it short. Mm -hmm. But I would like to add that some people like to look at that and think, okay, that good, that's good for the Arabs. They finally came out of that. But Islam didn't come just for the Arabs. Sure. And life outside of Arabia wasn't that great either for a family. Mm -hmm. If you look at life during Europe at the time, it was the same way. Women didn't have rights. Mm -hmm. Children didn't have rights. They were treated you know, inhumane. So it wasn't just for the Arabs. It started there and began there and it spread because it was for all of mankind. And I, I, I don't like people to think that, oh, just the Arabs were backwards. No, they weren't just them. Mm -hmm. The Europe was, was just as backward, if not more. Sure, agreed. So it was, it, it was, Islam came to, to ratify these things, to give rights and to, 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 show, to show justice, real justice. Not equality, but justice. Okay. Uh, we, we can get into that later, inshallah. Sure, and I actually yeah. intended to make the connection between not only in pre-Islamic societies was family backwards, exactly. but now in 2016, mm -hmm. progressive Western societies, we have this concept of family that's completely backwards mm -hmm. once again. And uh, in many cases, it never left from being backwards anyway. So it's not this in pre-Islamic uh, communities is currently happening mm -hmm. today. But for now, we want to talk about how Islam revolutionize uh, these things. Like you mentioned, uh, Brother Patrick mentioned that they used to bury daughters alive. So how, uh, you know, if they had some of them had girl children, they would bury them alive. And Allah Ta'ala even talked about this in the Quran when they would ask, for what reason were we buried? Um, but how did the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam begin by addressing these things? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, what were some things that he instituted, uh, you know, some, some of the laws and things like this that uh, helped uh, ratify these things and establish a new way? of uh, Islam and the family structure? As a matter of fact, uh, Islam has emphasized the importance of women in our society. As a uh, pre-Islamic period, they used to ignore this part. And I can say, uh, I remember hadith of our Prophet Muhammad. Someone came to him and he said, uh, among people who deserve the most, uh, I can say, the most, par uh, the most part of, uh, of my company, my good company, mm -hmm. he said, your mom. And then, then the man asked, then who? He said, then your mom. Mm -hmm. And then the man asked again, then who? He said, your mom. And then the man asked again, then who? He said, your father. So, you know, this appreciates uh, the value of woman. And then also the same part when you talk about uh, daughter and wives. I remember also our Prophet Muhammad, there was the hadith for our Prophet Muhammad. He was sitting with his companions and they said, some of them asked him, uh, who is very close to you, our Prophet Muhammad? He said, those who uh, treat their wives very well are very good for others. Mm -hmm. And this is very important for Islam. And Islam also gave rights to other, you know, for women and for, for children. Unlike other religions, Islam is a strong advocate of marriage. So Islam uh, has ordered Muslims to marry, mm -hmm. to purify their lives, and to uh, preserve and to guard their chastity. This is so important in Islam. Yeah, I mean, uh, came across something in, uh, in the Sira where in pre-Islamic Arabia, there would be women that would have relationships with maybe 10 men. Mm -hmm. And if she was to get pregnant, she would just pick whichever one is the father and he would be stuck with the child, things like this. And even in terms of the, the greater, larger family structure, in terms of the tribe, it was a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Whoever mm -hmm. was the strongest tribe would overcome and kill. You know, if, and that's why the women and children, they had no basis in Islam, uh, in the society rather, because it was based upon strength, sheer strength. Who had the most men? Who had the most sons, brothers, and uncles? So we can fight. If an individual was traveling somewhere and mm -hmm. he wasn't strong enough, they would take him and sell him into slavery. Yeah. If you weren't strong enough. So Islam also came to sort of debunk the tribalism that happened that I don't care what my brother or my cousin or my sister does, I'm with them. There's no justice. If, if my tribe does it, that's it. We're, you know, we're, we're together on this. And oppression through thickness of thing, we're, we're, gonna, we're together. But breaking those tribes up and, and establishing law, it made, you know, it made a rift throughout the Arabian Peninsula that was un, uh, unparalleled to anything seen before. That's true. Uh, Brother Patrick. Yeah, I, have, uh, I just uh, uh, I liked how uh, he addressed the point that uh, he said, your mother three times and then he said your father would even w that would make perfect sense because when you're uh, when you, uh, a mother becomes uh, pregnant she carries her baby for nine months and these n these nine months they're not they're not happy months if mm -hmm. you think about it, her body goes through a lot of changes mm -hmm. she gets uh, she gets sick morning sickness and she she has to e eat and and she 
her ankles get sore. It's it's rough. It's not easy. And she and even after you're born, uh, your your mother is the one that take care, that takes care of you. She changes your diapers. She she's there for you. She she's the one that breastfeeds you. So in 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 a sensible way, it it's kind of it's kind of logic that that your mom would come for first that she's more important mm -hmm. because uh, it. it it makes perfect sense, and uh, on the other point, yeah, it was uh, before Islamic. It was uh, the physical strength, mm -hmm. so it was men, basically men, because they had the physical strength. They had because men they have hair on their bodies. They even even uh, they their look in nature. It's more dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's more. It's more of a predator like mm -hmm. not not a woman. So they w the men they would they would have control mm -hmm. because they would have the physical strength mm -hmm. but what they did not consider is that uh, uh, women or they have the emotional uh, part that uh, some of us men don't have mm -hmm. they understand they can connect mm -hmm. with the children they they can hear them they can they can they can see them in a different way maybe us men we don't understand that mm -hmm. but they're the ones that are more connected to their children so yeah, that and even intellectually, right? Right. The the the, the greatest scholar of Islam was Aisha radiallahu ta'ala. Oh, and in oh, pre-Islamic oh. Arabia, there was no such thing as Islamic scholarship for women, or I mean scholarship in general for women. Mm -hmm. um, but you see that, and now the Sahabiyat, there has never been a female narrator of hadith that has lied in hadith, never and throughout history. And you know, mm -hmm. so alhamdulillah, some of the, the the benefits that we have by establishing such a structure, but uh, brother Idris. Yeah, today I was looking through this material and trying to read and uh, find something. And I really didn't find a lot. I, c I came across something kind of profound mm -hmm. that I, I, I noticed and kind of realized for the first time is that the Rasul I was trying to find out how did the Rasulullah Sallam, how did he Allah treat Allah. his daughters w when they were in, in a younger mm. age? And I found that there's not hardly anything reported about it. And the reason why we have this is because uh, during the time of his daughter's young ages, they were in Mecca, and the, the Muslims were persecuted. Mm -hmm. So the, the Muslims didn't really transmit stories then, because it was more of a hush-hush, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. keep it quiet type thing. Mm -hmm. And during this time, his daughters were young. So we have a little things here and there, but we don't have a lot. I was trying to look at deep and to see, mm -hmm. okay, how, how was he with his children when they were young? What was he doing? We don't have a lot. Mm -hmm. But what I did find and found profound was that the Rasulullah why did Allah allow him to have four daughters and daughters only? Mm. Perhaps some of the ulama say that, that the wisdom is he was allowed to have daughters only for a strong reason to, the, like you said, debunk mm. a lot of myths about women and daughters. Mm. He, he, he brought a lot of justice through his daughters, showed how, you know, uh, when they became older, we know of. Mm. When he was younger, we don't have a lot, but Allah showed him that, you know, this is... I want you to see this. How, this is how you treat women. Mm. Had he had a, a son, it might have been a little bit different. Well, she did have sons, but they passed away. They died, yeah. yes. But I mean, th that lived. Th yeah. th he could have, you know, raised and been with. Mm -hmm. uh, the, his youngest son uh, is a difference of opinion, but he died when he was uh, a few years old, they say. Mm -hmm. Some say a little bit older, but pretty young. But the point is that he had these daughters, and everything happened with him for a reason. Yeah. So we think about these reasons. And... Why? I think one of the reasons that uh, this is not for me, this is from the, from the ulama, mm -hmm. is that he w he was shown that to raise women, to be around women, show you that the importance of women. Mm -hmm. yeah. Had he had sons that lived and, and grew up, it would have may have been different, especially during this time period. It's kind of an interesting thing to, to research and go into and read more. There's more to read into it, but that's something that I kind of came across and thought was a, a kind of amazing thing. Yeah, that's that's an interesting mm -hmm. point too. Uh, there's one of the ulama uh, that's covering Sira and was uh, covering the rights that a child has upon a parent, mm. uh, particularly the, the father. Uh, the child has the right that the father picks out a righteous spouse, mm. a righteous sure. woman, and that for the mother, that the mother picks out a righteous husband. So he was talking about um, Fatima and how she was like, she would be the Sayyidah of Jannah. Mm. And they were asking, why Fatima? You know, there's so many righteous women. Why, why her? And they said that her akhlaq was the akhlaq of Khadija. Mm. So if you want to know the tarbiyah that his, his daughters had, look at the woman that gave them tarbiyah. Mm. So he said he had, she had the akhlaq of Khadija radiallahu anha. And they say, you know what's funny about this whole thing is that 
they uh, like Aisha said that she was most like her father mm -hmm. out of all of his exactly. daughters. Exactly. She walked like him. Yeah. She talked like him. Mm -hmm. She was like a, a, a you know a, a mirror image of him. Mm -hmm. So that's one another another reason why. And uh, if you think about what you just said, that mm -hmm. he picked amazing husbands for all of his daughters. Mm -hmm. I mean, look what uh, he picked. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, look at all the ones he picked. Yeah. I don't even gotta go ahead and go to a break, but. Yep. Inshallah Ta'ala, we're going to pause for a report and we'll be right back to continue this very, very essential dis discussion. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How perfect my Quran has provided the world with the most powerful source of regulation and Islam places the status of women and the family at the most precious and central unit of the society and has laid down laws to prefer, preserve its sanctity. Let us take another example. You can travel throughout the Muslim world as I have done and of course you see tragedy, you see deviation. We see Muslims being away from Islam, being negligent in their conduct, but the family, the Muslim family, is still intact. In the Western world, when a person becomes 60 years old or 70 years old and they can no longer function, let me tell you what happened to them in China. In China, they're put to sleep. because they have something in China called zero population. So there's no toleration for old people. When they get to a point where they have no function any longer, they put them to sleep like dogs. In China, the rule is one child for every family. And if you have two children, you are put in prison and you are, you and your wife are both anesthetized and remove and your ability to have children is taken out what do they call that vasectomy. vasectomy sterilized this is China so what has the family become in the modern world and what is the family in Islam the family in Islam is the most sacred unit without the family there's no society Without the family, there's no sanctity. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi has placed respect for the mother and father as the highest respect next to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. A man asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, Ayy A'mal Afdal. He said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, As-Salatu Ala Al-Waqtiha. Prayer in its proper time. The man then said, Thumma ayyu. He said, Birru walidayn. And the man then asked, And what next? He said, Al jihad fi sabilillah. So the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was asked, What action is the best and what is the most excellent in the sight of Allah, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, he said, Prayer in its proper time. And after that, respect for your two parents. And after that, struggling in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because the family has this value in Islam, still you find in the Muslim countries, the children respectful of their parents. The Prophet sallallahu said, He is not of us who has no softness, gentleness towards the youth, and has no respect for our elders. This is the family of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers, to another episode of Let's Talk on your favorite station, Huda TV. I'm your host, Yusuf Kroma, and today we're covering the concept of the family in Islam. Alhamdulillah, our beloved Sheikh Haile Yaseen uh, gave us a few ayat and uh, some ahadith 
to ponder over. And one of the things he stood, said that really stood out to me was that without the family, there's no society. And he, he mentioned uh, that after uh, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah put in the same category obeying the parents. Uh, so mashallah, we can, if you want to know the status of the family in, in Islam, look that Allah ta'ala put after obeying him in the same sentence, uh, obeying the parents. Subhanallah. Uh, so he also mentioned something about the family structure in the West. He mentioned something in China that when older people uh, get to a certain age, they put them to sleep. So this feeds into our next question, which is that, what are some of the current structures of family systems in the West, and how are they juxtaposed to what the Sharia has opposed for the family in Islam? Unlike other religions, uh, Islam uh, has ordered uh, Muslims to, uh, to marry for many reasons, not mm -hmm. just to guard their chastity, and also for other reasons, to protect them against diseases. You know, I'll tell you something. If you compare the rate of uh, uh, sexual in infections compared to other societies mm. in Muslims, you find the rate of Muslim inner uh, um, this infection is very low mm -hmm. compared to other societies. Mm. As because Islam, because these societies are unstable and you know they have this kind of intersection, this kind of sexual intersection. They have nothing to say. They have, don't have the concept of halal and haram, mm -hmm. unlike Islam told us this is right and this is wrong so Islam has ordered Muslims to to marry for this reason so so just to be clear we're talking about the institution of marriage in Islam which transcends to a culture an entire culture in Islamic Muslim culture yeah. that th that is unseen in other in like the western things like yeah. that yeah fair enough okay so this is in uh, in Islam you know it gives us this right to marry to save us from these diseases, you know. So Islam uh, is, a, is a religion that seeks purity and seeks uh, this kind of cooperation in the society. Yeah, and interesting, uh, Sheikh Khaled Yassin said something very interesting. No matter how jacked up a Muslim society may be, you'll always find the family structure intact. That is very, very strange to see the general amount of people and engaging in like premarital sexual activity or you know this a looseness uh, between men and women. You won't you won't find that in Muslim culture. Sure. Yeah. Even if other things are there, you know that particular thing, the idea of family and lineage and the uh, the preservation of that um, is something that that still remains. Inshallah, uh, brother Patrick. Yeah, I would like to uh, say um, I'm from Slovenia, and uh, usually in Slovenia, mm -hmm. yes, uh, they have this. Uh, Children have every right, and when they become 16, yeah, mm -hmm. they they actually they they start to get into in sexual intercourses, and this is how diseases spread. Yeah. Sometimes the child out of marriage, and that causes a lot of trouble. Sometimes they even you know they kill the child when it's in her in her womb, which which is actually murder. Mm. So um, they don't want to prevent that. They don't have a sense of what's right or, or wrong. But there's a mo more important problem. Said like in, in Islam. They said that it said that if two, or uh, or they love each other, marry them. Mm -hmm. If they're if they're right, if they have the right deen and mm -hmm. akhlaq, marry them. And this is and, and it's supposed to be in in uh, a long time ago. It's supposed to be something easy. But what's the problem is today in Egypt that even in Egypt or in other Arab countries mm -hmm. that uh, nowadays marriage is not that easy. Right. Not not anyone yeah, can afford the cost it. Of life. So Makes so it very difficult. Yeah. This is so this is why. <laughs> This is why I even uh, nowadays in Arab world, it's starting to sexual diseases are starting to uh, transmit, and people are starting to have in their course out of marriage because they 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 can't they can't afford to get married, mm -hmm. and and uh, it is well known that uh, that marriage is is what you're supposed to do, yeah. but. Some men they can't. They don't have the financial state. They don't. They, and, and nowadays they want. Uh, they want. You know. They want a house. They want a car. They want a job. And not everyone can get yeah. that. So. And this brings me to a very, uh, very, very uh, pertinent point, which is that when we talk about Muslim societies, and this is my opinion, I don't think there's any place in the world right now that's an ideal Muslim society, the way the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam intended. Peace to, to sort of uh, instruct and stabilize a Muslim society, I don't think there's any place in the world that has this uh, copy of what the Sharia says. Yeah. Now that being stated, so when we talk about, you know, different places have different 
pieces that if we're all came together, inshallah ta'ala, you know, we'll, we'll look something. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there's any place that has that. So you have Muslim cultures that, all, that adapt the West, that adapt different things from the, within their own culture that sort of override the Sharia. Mm -hmm. And it sort of mixes up what the Prophet ﷺ taught us in Islam. Uh, one of the things being here, uh, the difficulty amongst people to get married. Uh, just you'll find an individual maybe getting married at 40 years old. Yeah, so, exactly. So, you know, and yeah, in this, in this time period, of course, uh, uh, um, um, sexual uh, uh, intercourse is something that uh, that is like a need. It's sure. in the hierarchy sure. of needs. Because sure. this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is how He created us. This is how we populate. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's an essential. And another problem is in the West, in West countries or in Slovenia, mm -hmm. uh, what they do right, what they think they do right mm -hmm. is that they let them go together, they don't pay anything, you don't need to pay anything because you are going to build your life. Mm -hmm. So they don't need no money, they don't need no any, any essential like a car, a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're on your own, you're a big, you're a big boy now, you mm -hmm. get married or a girl, if, if they're right for each other, okay. And now you uh, continue with your uh, with your life. So, so this is what they do right. What we do what we do right is that we press on the marriage. But we d we before we d marry them, no, we have to like you know like yeah, no, you need a car, mm -hmm. no, you need a job, mm -hmm. you know, you need that, you need this. Mm -hmm. So before th the list ends, he goes like, uh, I'm not doing this. Yeah, hyper materialism. E exactly. Yeah, yeah hyper materialism. I think uh, you find the parts of some even marrying people. Like, what do you have? Uh, I only have a shield, or and you know whatever you have. We're going to keep this institution of marriage going. And that's something that was very, very essential. That it's not just uh, it's sort of to sort of demean a woman or anything like that. It's the institution of marriage. So when you find two righteous people that come together, whatever it takes for them to get married, put them together. Because if you don't, there's going to be evil and that spreads within the land. And now you see, if somebody's not getting married until 40 years old, what are they doing those 40 years? It's going to come out in different ways and different behaviors, sexual harassment, and you yeah. know different different sort of things. That's so true. it's better for the entire society when people are married. Yeah, right, brother Idris. Yes, and you you you, you will find this in uh, several hadith about this. What, exactly what you said. I don't even know if you know it's hadith, but mm -hmm. that whenever you if 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 you uh, prevent marriage, that fasahad will spread across the land. This mm -hmm. is we learn this. It's, 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 it's makes sense. It, it's it's tantamount to why we have so many problems. They make marriage so, for whatever reason, you may stop them because of uh, financial reasons, you may stop them because they're not from my tribe, he's, or he's, he's too dark, he's too light, mm -hmm. or he's from here, he's from there. Well, if, they're, if they're compatible and they want to get married and everything is fine, if you stop them from getting married, you're creating fitna. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. creating a problem not just for yourself, but for the people on the land. Mm -hmm. This is something that Allah promised you. So, so it's not something that you know should be taken lightly. As, as especially in this part of the world, like as he's mentioned, that they make it virtually uh, easier for you to commit zina than it is to get married. Sure. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they've made it reversed. Why? Why would I go through all of this nonsense? This is driving me crazy. I can't deal with it. Yeah. What they end up doing, whatever they want to do. Yeah. So, but um, to add to, to 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 the West, as you well know. <laughs> Man, the, the, the family structure is becoming almost non-existent mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. You have women who have children out of wedlock and it's seen as nothing. Not a big deal. There's no chastisement if a, girl, a lady has a, a kid and she's, she just, she's not married. Mm -hmm. No problem. No, it's, it's normal now. It's, it's, normal, become, sure, it's yeah. become normal. I mean, yeah. this is the problem we have is that this lifestyle that is becoming normal and they're pushing and they keep pushing and pushing and pushing and trying to make normal is actually haram and against what society needs. Mm -hmm. Allah told us what this, this is a sickness. We're making this, this disease normal. You're normalizing these sins and making it seem like, mm -hmm. you know, what's the problem? What's the big deal? And, and Muslims are falling for it. It's one thing for the, the non-Muslim to do it. It's another thing for Muslims to follow this way of the, 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 the non-believer into the snake hole. And it's, it's, it's as if it's okay and to justify it. Like, oh, let, let, let them do whatever they want to do. Everyone has the right to do what they want to do. This is the new trend I keep saying, like yeah. from a lot of duad, is mm -hmm. you can't tell people, you know, this is freedom. They can, they can do whatever they. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. Your job is to tell them that this is not good. Mm -hmm. Don't shy away from from what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said. Too many dua are are at the point where they where they don't want to say the truth. They just want to sing. Can we all get along like mm -hmm. Rodney King? Mm -hmm. This isn't Islam. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know where this this trend is coming from. And lately, in the last. 
five to ten years that people don't want to say the truth. They'd rather just you know, let things go and say, okay, let, let the West determine what's, what's the hawk and what's the bottom. Mm -hmm. When this is not the way it is. Yeah. Allah is, is the one who does it. Blind imitation. This is yeah. blind imitation. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the, the negative side of the globalization. You know, people, you know, just uh, try to do, they imitate what other people do mm -hmm. without, regardless of what this is right or wrong. They, mm -hmm. This is the problem, you see. Nowadays, you see some uh, guys, you know, this bad fashion trends. You see torn jeans and you see short skirts and... You know, even you tell her this is half naked, this is this is against Islam. They say this is freedom. They misunderstand the word of freedom. Mm -hmm. They think freedom to do what you like, any mm -hmm. time you like, whenever you like, uh, whatever you like. But this is not. We have limits. We have something called halal and haram. We have the concept, but they don't care about this. Mm -hmm. They just want to please themselves. Whatever this is right or wrong. Yeah, and I think the worst thing about what you're saying is that the people who are here to give them, you know, to, to advise them, don't want to advise anyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, it's one thing for someone to say, only God can judge me, you know, and I have freedom. Okay, you saying that, but I'm going to keep telling you till the day, till the day I die, this yeah. is haram, I don't care what you say. Yeah, this sure. is wrong. I don't. But nowadays, we have people who just leave them alone, you know. Don't stir the pot. Don't make problems, you know. This is we have so many problems mm -hmm. in the world today. I don't want to, mm -hmm. you know, we have all these, you know, Muslims doing crazy things. I don't want to. They're compromising the deen because they don't want to stick to the truth. Sure. Yeah. There's no, uh, you know, istiqamah. They, they can't stay yeah, to the truth. Yeah. Yeah. SubhanAllah, uh, dear viewers, we're going to go for a short break and we're going to get right back to add to this very, very beneficial uh, topic. Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How perfect my Go ahead, Yasha. Recite from air number 16 uh, to 26. Yeah, okay. <laughs> والمتلقيان عن اليمين وعن الشمال قعيد ما ينفر من قول إلا لديه رقيب على السكرة الموت بالحق ذلك ما كنت منه تحيد ونفخ في ونفق في الصور ذلك يوم الوعيد وجاءت كل نفس معها سائق وشهيد لقد كنت في غفلة من هذا فكشفنا فكشفنا عنك غطاءك فبصرك اليوم حديد Now that we know more about da'wah, what would you say are the characteristics of a da'i? Sincerity. Sincerity? Yes? Good relation with Allah. Good relation with Allah. Okay. Patience. Yes, sir. Good manners. Good manners. And there is much more to that. Join us in our program, the Da'wah Workshop.
by your brother, Dr. Rayyan Fawzi Arab, so that we could talk more about da'wah exclusively on Huda TV. <laughs>
things. Don't worry about what, oh, the neighbors and oh, this. Who cares? Are they more important than Allah? If this marriage is good, go forward with it. Find a way, make it happen. Don't worry about the, you know, the, the gold and the money. and the, If it's a good marriage, if they're good people, and they should get married, they want it, mm -hmm. facilitate it for them. Yeah. yeah. I remember being younger, going to like Islamic school, and like, you know, in high school, that topic of marriage will always come up, right? And we have these debates and things like that. And when some of the children from like, um, you know, from these countries, the, the, the boys would say that we're never getting married, you know, we're just here, we're just going to have girlfriends or whatever like that. To me, it was ajeeb. I was like, why would you, you know, it was weird. Why would you have this mentality? And they would mention like, no, before I get married, I need to have an apartment. You need to measure the apartment. It needs to be this long. <laughs> you have to have this amount of furniture, this texture of furniture, this amount of gold, this money. As a Muslim in America, I wasn't, I wasn't accustomed to this. Yes. In America, if you marry someone, the most important thing is your akhlaq. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. a non-Muslim country. For the Muslims, that is. For yeah. the Muslims, yeah. that is, right? Yeah. So somebody, could you come to someone's father, who are you? What is your akhlaq? What's your religion? What's your aqidah? Uh, what are your references? Do you pray in a masjid? Who can we ask to verify? They would go around asking. They would go around you? asking people, right? Yeah. And the last thing, right? It's important. Can you support my daughter? It's the last. After yeah. everything. Last else. thing. Can you support her? And if not, as a family, we'll come together and support you. Yeah. There's some brothers that would say, on the top. Subhanallah. Yeah, it's on top of the list. Yeah. Subhanallah. The yeah. first thing is akhlaq. Yeah. But then it's backwards, right? Yeah. Do you got this money? Do you got this gold? Can you afford these? <laughs> Then if your religion is, ah, I feel like it's a that? deal. Yeah, I feel it's like a deal. You know, you have more money, mm -hmm. then you win the race. Okay, congratulations. Here's yeah. another bad thing that I would yeah. like to tell, especially the viewers, especially sisters, who don't realize this. Yeah. That especially coming from a man, I'm telling you, if you may, if force a guy to do this and he ends up doing, he struggles and ends up doing oh. it all. After he marries you. He is going to resent you. Yeah, exactly. That's the He's going to word. feel like, resent. this woman made me do so many things I didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. He won't tell you in the beginning because yeah. he thinks it's going to be happy. Yeah. But throughout marriage, you're going to have a tough time. This is yeah. why so many marriages enter and have so many divorces. I so mean, many yeah. problems. Yeah. So many fighting. And they, they hate each yeah. other because they <laughs> entered the marriage wrong. Yeah, sure. One of the, the greatest causes for divorces in marriage is financial, yeah. uh, you know, imbalances, uh, poor financial situations. So even if you were to say that this money is important, instead of buying all these things, we'll take this money and put it in the bank in a saving account yeah. or something like that and yeah. save for a time when the finances get bad. You know, at least it's there as an asset. But, you know, why make this condition like this? Yes. Actually, uh, actually, uh, it's not in, in, in all cases, it's not like that. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm going to get married in a in couple Shalala. of months. Mm -hmm. And actually, I met uh, this, uh, her parents. Uh, they were very nice. And yes, they, all they care about is akhlaq. Mm -hmm. And when you, the people, what they forget is that when, you, when you're graduating, when you just come up fresh graduate, you just mm -hmm. got your degree, you, you're not going to be a millionaire. You're going to work like an employee or something really low in a company. And then with time, you get promoted. Uh, you start to get good salary. So people can't expect, expect just some guy to come and he's like 22, 21, like I am, and be like, yeah, so what's your salary? 3000 on that one too. What do you expect me to do? I, I, don't, I can't get a job to be like a manager or something. Or I, I can't. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, um, I'm really thankful, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, that, that um, her family, it's not like that. Yeah. Uh, they all they care about is akhlaq uh, uh, and deen and will you be able to have the knowledge mm -hmm. the, the, the Islam knowledge to uh, raise the children correctly to, yeah. to yeah. deal with your wife correctly to deal with, with things that will face you correctly and, yeah. and, and this is the most important and they don't ask for money yeah. because we're a family and, and m m my father as well he, he, he would support me financially until I'm I'm old enough. Mm -hmm. I can I can repay him back in in any way. Mm -hmm. So it it doesn't it doesn't have to be this way. Even in 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 our countries, it doesn't need. If if money is what they need, okay, maybe you can take a loan or something. But no, they want that now. It's like now. No, we we need a good salary now. We can't wait for that long. And mm -hmm. by that time, things are gonna happen. Yeah. Because by the time you're 20, 21, you or, or 22, you start to get this. Uh, just, you know, you, you really want to go in a relationship and mm -hmm. start to get a wife, you know, start a family, m many different dreams. And this is what blocks the dream. Mm -hmm. It makes you, forces you to just work all day. And you know what, I'm going to go out with my friends. I'm going to go, I see many people, many guys, they're like 30 years old, and they play video games. Mm -hmm. This is what they do. It's like, what, why, why, why don't you do something with your life? This is, this is all I can do. I have a bad salary. 
and, and even something strange too. They said that the highest rate of people that watch pornography are in Middle Eastern countries. Exactly, ninety something percent. Exactly, you know, some the, actually yeah. some Both of men the, and yeah. women. Some of some of the some of the these sites actually origin mm -hmm. from the Middle East. Mm -hmm. This is uh, I, this shocked me. Mm -hmm. This shocked me so bad because I was like, this is what why? Yeah. But actually, when you think about it, it makes sense because yeah. we we can't mm -hmm. uh, we can't there, handle this. There was a, a, a huge study done in, in, in the West. And this has nothing to do with the Muslims. This is the interesting part. Nothing to do with the Muslims. This was a study of the West, of marriages in, in the West. Mm -hmm. And they, they found a tendency that the more money that was spent on the marriage, yep. the higher the divorce rate. Mm -hmm. yeah. The less money and simple the marriage was, the longer, you know, longer yeah. they, they stayed together. or they, lasting, did, uh, yeah. they didn't get divorced or they stayed together. Yeah. There was not, hardly any divorce rate. This is something that we could learn from them. Pay attention. The Rasulullah told us this already. He showed us the way. We're just ignoring it and have these silly customs coming from... I don't even know where they come from. I'm not from here, so mm -hmm. I have to ask the people from these, these customs. But yeah. they're letting them override what the Rasulullah brought to us. They're letting this take over this beautiful deen, mm -hmm. this beautiful way of life, and dirty it. So we the have this treatment mm -hmm. after marriage. The man said, I bought you with my money. Yes, yeah. pretty much. He you're thinks my slave. Yeah, yeah. you're my slave. You're mm -hmm. my maid. Yeah. I worked hard. I bought you, you with my money. You, yeah. made, you yeah. destroyed me before. Yeah, you yeah. see. Yeah. This I'll is lack of respect. Yeah. This yeah. lack of respect. Yeah, That's sure. True. Yeah, so now it's the one that's boiled down to like a sort of thing to be bought. Like, yeah. you know, uh, subhanAllah, as opposed to a human being, an actual human being that uh, I have to work on my character and, you know, love as a person as opposed to a thing that I can purchase. Yeah, if I have enough exactly money, exactly I can purchase you. This is this exactly. is a, this is a major problem also because now nowadays, uh, I feel like uh, uh, these costumes that are here, their daughters are treated like something you can buy. Like yeah. you go to the market mm -hmm. and it's like it's like yeah, bring the next one in. Also, oh, what you have, mm -hmm. I have this and that and that. Okay, no good. The mm -hmm. next one in, it's like they don't even care. They, sometimes they don't even care what where he does he come from. Does he pray or not? Does mm -hmm. he does he even they know? Don't care about this. Yeah, they don't yeah. care about. They just like the what can you offer? For social That's ills right. that we have in the, in exactly. the right now. It's humiliating. The beginning yeah. of the social Ill, mm -hmm. the ills. Exactly. What can you offer? That's the question you got asked. What can you offer? This is the question I get asked when I when I start to, uh, when I go to like a, a market and I want to buy something like you know it's a bidding. Mm -hmm. Like already who who's got fifty thousand? Okay, who's got sixty? Yeah. Yeah. That's it's not like this. This is a human being. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to. The family is supposed to come together yeah. and support financially the beginning of the marriage. Yeah. Yeah. When they have enough salary, they can repay back, and <coughs> it doesn't have to need to be financially. They can just repay the, back. Just in to add ways. one point: people forget the reason for marriage is what right. to help each other get the jannah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they forget the whole purpose, the very foundation of why are we getting married? Seek stability, of yeah, course. Yeah. Yeah. For, for number one, to please Allah. Yeah, sure. To try to help each other get the jinnah. Mm -hmm. After that is procreate, to have uh, you know co companionship. Mm -hmm. Everything else is second. Mm -hmm. So how is this making things impossible going to help me get the jinnah? Mm -hmm. is, is this really going to help? It's going to make it worse. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is this is a this is a very important subject. Yeah, yeah. That, that that when you when you get a wife, you know that this is because you want to uh, you want to do the sunnah of Islam of marriage. Because this is this is very important in Islam. Half your deen. Yes, mm -hmm. and and it's it's half of your religion uh, basically, and it's important that you know that this is why you're helping each other to go to Jannah, where you can you know you can spend your life there for eternity, mm -hmm. inshallah. Mm -hmm. But uh, even now, I, I I'm 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 not married yet, but uh, I create this group on WhatsApp with uh, uh, with my fiance, and we keep reminding each other about prayer. Mm -hmm. We just we just we just write you know Aisha, mm -hmm. which like. Mm -hmm. you know, to keep reminding, or we just write, yeah. you know, the which pages of Quran did you read today? Yeah. Just write, I, I read this, this, and that's it, because it's important y to to remind each other. This is why we we mm -hmm. we, we come yeah. together mm -hmm. to have a right path that we yeah. together we stand united, and yeah. it's easier. Yeah. You but do some things, I do some things. But yeah. it's yeah. so your exactly. intention should be to please Allah. If you mm -hmm. remember exactly. that when you're trying to get married, or even if you've been married, it's not too late to correct it. Mm -hmm. Go, you know, throw yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and correct your intentions and start over again. Shock your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that they'll be thinking, okay, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, just go and do the right thing. Yeah. So I don't want to make it seem like, you know, this once you get into it, you're doomed and, oh, well, it's all over. No, you, you can change it through the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So mm -hmm. it's up to you. So for the people who, who are, are, maybe they went and did it wrong. Okay, you know what? Yeah. Change it. Yeah. And for those who haven't, keep your intentions correct. 
Yeah. And seek the pleasure of Allah. If you haven't, you're not doing that, then what are you doing for? You're going to have your reward, okay? You're not, you may not, you may not be happy with it. Mm -hmm. uh, alhamdulillah, we have a, a minute left on the show. I'm going to close out with some nasiha. Uh, if you're a father out there that has a daughter that you're thinking about getting married, you're looking for a potential spouse, what to look for? I know the custom has been this way, but perhaps if someone can make a change and say, I'm looking for the one that has good akhlaq, even if he doesn't have the finances or he doesn't have this or that, if he has good akhlaq, he's responsible. I know he's going to take care of my daughter. I know he's going to be a good father and a good husband to make an investment in that individual and make an investment in building, rebuilding their family and reestablishing the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah will put barakah in that marriage and this will be a sadaqah jariya for you for re, 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 uh, rekindling the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what are some last closing advices that we can give to those watching our show and thinking how can we, uh, you know, how can we make changes? Well first I would like to uh, point out uh, this part of uh, obedience of parents which is so important. I think uh, the Holy Quran uh, has mentioned this uh, that you should uh, obey your parents. This is very important. Mm -hmm. But I want to give some advice for the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. I mean, the head of the household. Uh, balance your time. This is so important. Mm -hmm. And also, have a good relationship with your wife. Don't, uh, don't raise your voice in front of kids. Mm -hmm. Don't fight in front of kids because this will cause some psychological problems for kids. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, be, be understanding to each other and pray together. Have a good relationship. And don't interfere uh, families and uh, friends uh, in your problems because this will make the problem bigger and bigger. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Unfortunately, we have run out of time on this very, very crucial topic. Perhaps we can pick another episode to revisit some of the things because this is something that we can talk about for hours. So inshallah ta'ala, we're going to try and revisit this topic and bring about solutions. Uh, this has been a wonderful discussion about the concept of family in Islam. I've been your host, Yusuf Kroma, on your favorite station, Huda TV, on your favorite uh, channel uh, or program, Let's Talk. I look forward to seeing you next time. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.